Wet weather is helping crews hold the perimeter of a massive wildfire threatening Labrador City. About 9,000 people are still out of their homes. There's no word yet on when they'll be able to return. Town don't burn. I'm happy. I don't care if I'm here for two weeks, three weeks, as long as the town don't burn. We have to hope for the best. Any word about when you can go home? No. No, no, no. It's quite difficult, you know, being in a room most of the day or in the truck. Today, too, it was sort of favorable. Um, we're hoping middle end of the week, but I mean, who knows with the fires, so. For more on this, we are now joined by Andrew Fury, the Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador. He's joining us this morning from Halifax, where he is attending the Premier's meeting. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Premier Fury. So let's start off with the wildfire near Labrador City. What is the situation this morning? So there continues to be uh, good news, Juanita. Um, the weather is cooperating. Uh, yesterday, the fire remained at a Category 1, which is basically some embers. Um, it's allowed uh, the hardworking women and men and the water bombers and the helicopter assets to really attack this by air, uh, which meant that the fire didn't grow substantially overnight, or even the first report the, this morning seems that it's stable in size, still 14,000 hectares, large mass. but. The, cate the category of the fire has diminished and it's nice and stable now. That's going to allow us uh, to bring in people to actually get on the ground and do that grueling work, uh, the true heroes on the front line doing the grueling work of turning over sod and making sure the fire is fully out. So encouraging weather, weather pattern, uh, encouraging suppression and mitigation activity, uh, which uh, should continue throughout the day. And um, to everybody who's been evacuated, I know it's a stressful time, just be patient. Uh, we, we need to make sure it's safe for you to return. I know there's lots of questions about that, but we are developing uh, repatriation plans, but safety first, and we need to make sure that the firefighters are doing their jobs first and foremost. And, and just talk to us about some of the challenges facing emergency response teams right now. Sorry, could you repeat the question? Yeah, talk about some of the challenges that are facing the emergency response teams. So uh, obviously uh, this is two forest fires in a short period of time. So uh, these uh, women and men have been uh, pushed uh, and pushed again. It was just a couple of weeks ago that we were uh, talking about the Churchill Falls fires and now here we are talking about Labrador City fires. It's the same people doing the same job. So they're, they're being pushed to their professional limits and we're so grateful for the hard work that they're doing. So that is a challenge. Um, but the challenge of the fire itself um, was was just the inferno itself, the fire conditions itself a few days ago. Now, of course, it's, it's settled, which allows uh, those people to do their jobs, allows the suppression workers to do their jobs from air and from ground. And that is hard, grueling work. Uh, being in the Labrador wilderness, for anyone who's been, is not easy by itself, let alone uh, having to fight a fire. So that is tough, grueling work. Those are true heroes on the front line. And of course, you are hearing from people there. What, what are you hearing from evacuees forced to abandon their homes? And, and where do things stand with the financial aid Ottawa is providing for them? So uh, I had the opportunity to be in Happy Valley Goose Bay as people were being evacuated from their homes uh, just a few days ago. Um, people are tired, uh, they're stressed, uh, they're anxious, uh, and I convey to them those are all normal feelings and you should be allowed to feel those. Uh, but if you have uh, serious issues, if you have concerns, please reach out to somebody who can help. Uh, we have mental health supports uh, set up for them. Uh, but everybody seemed to be buoyed by the fact that the people of Happy Valley Goose Bay once again opened their homes and their hearts uh, to support them in, this, in their time of need. It was a, it was a true moment of uh, fatigue but hope at the same time. You could see the, the stress on their face, but as they were walking into the arena, you could see that they were reassured by the people of Happy Valley Goose Bay, by the people of Newfoundland and Labrador, that they were all there to support them, to welcome them, and that they would see them through this, this process. With respect um, to the second part of your question, the provincial financial assistance program a week put in place was for those who were displaced immediately. We're offering $1,000 to those who've been evacuated uh, from uh, Labrador City. There is a second stream from those who are still in their homes but under evacuation alert in Wabush. The adjacent community uh, for those who've had employment disruption. The first stream is available immediately. You can, uh, for those who've been evacuated, I encourage you to register at the Red Cross
across. There's a web page specific to this. Uh, they tell me they can turn around the payments very quickly, and payments should be starting to go out today or tomorrow. Uh, $1,000 for those who've been, who, who have been displaced from their homes. Those in Wabush, please just bear with us. We will have a stream set up for you as well uh, shortly. Okay, and let's just switch gears a little bit here. The need for federal funding is a, a critical concern as climate change makes these extreme weather events more and more common. That's expected to come up today at the Premier's annual summit in ha Halifax, which is where you are right now. So let's shift our focus to it that. Is. What are some of your priorities at this year's meeting? Well, I think some of the priori there's shared priorities across, uh, across jurisdictions. Uh, there's um, conversations being had about the state of the Federation. Of course, we all share um, the concerns and as a, as a priority, uh, the state of the Canadian health care system. Uh, we all uh, share as concerns and as a priority the cost of living crisis that is facing uh, Canadians right now. And uh, more broadly, as, uh, as premiers, uh, there is a shared concern about the, the state of the Federation and more broadly, I suppose, uh, the state of democracy given some of the events uh, uh, down south. Now, Premier Fury, in a letter sent to the Prime Minister last week, you and other Premiers urged the federal government to refrain from unilateral actions in areas of provincial and territorial jurisdiction. Can you elaborate what you mean by this? Sure. So, I think Canada works best when levels of government work together. We are very open in Newfoundland and Labrador to working with the federal government, but we don't work for the federal government. So when there is a program that's going to be announced, we want to work collaboratively with them to ensure that it's best for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. That involves consultation, it involves discussion, and involves uh, some feedback and changing tact, depending on our positions. But when you look at, I'll pick one example, if you look at school lunch programs, for example, that is exclusively a provincial jurisdiction. And we have a school lunch program in Newfoundland and Labrador. We are very open and welcoming and wanting to work with the federal government on school lunch programs. But to announce it one day with, with no collaboration uh, is, is a symbol and signal of jurisdictional creep. And I think we need to respect uh, the, state of the, the state of the federation and, more importantly, the parameters of the Constitution. Uh, and work together. Uh, I think Canadians expect us to work together. They want us to work together. We want to work together to achieve what's right uh, for Canadians and for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. Uh, but that has to be done uh, together in respecting uh, the, uh, the Constitution. Now, there are, there are areas, by the way, that are exclusively federal jurisdiction, which my province would like, and I believe others, would like to have a more collaborative approach. And that should be an open conversation, like management of our, uh, of our fishery resources right now. It's unacceptable that foreign fleets can come in off the coast of Newfoundland and Labrador and fish cod. Moratorium was put in place in 1992. It's people of Newfoundland and Labrador have nursed that back. They've, they've sent their children away to Alberta and to other provinces because there was nothing else to do in Newfoundland and Labrador because of the moratorium. Now that it's coming back, that resource rightfully belongs to Newfoundland and Labrador. But there was no consultation with us with respect to lifting the moratorium. I woke up one day and saw that the moratorium was lifted. If they had it consulted with us, I think we could have got to a better place, which prevented offshore trawlers, foreign offshore trawlers, in our shores. The Russians, the Spaniards, the Portuguese, they didn't nurse this resource back to good health. And it's unacceptable for, for them to take a, a cod tongue, a cod fillet, or a single cod fish from the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. And that's something that I'll be bringing to the table here this week. All right. Well, good luck in your talks this week, and thank you for joining us this morning. That was Andrew Fury, the Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador.